Hi, and thanks for watching another instructional video for CSCI 1300. In this video, we will cover the differences between a while loop and a do while loop. The main difference between a while loop and a do while loop is that a do while will execute at least one time, whereas a while loop can execute zero times, one times, or more times. In this example, let's cover a refresher of what a while loop does. A while loop is set up with some kind of a terminating condition inside of its parentheses, and then there is a body within that loop where something is executed, either a print statement, we ask for input validation, something like that, some process is performed, and we have some incrementer on our terminating condition. So there's either some process that continues until we assign a variable a certain score or we set a, a variable to on or off like a boolean variable or we have a number that's reaching a certain terminating value like in this case we're using an integer number called num whose terminating value is as long as num is less than 10 we can print to the user hello from the while loop on line 15 we're incrementing num by one so that we eventually do reach our terminating condition. So inside of our, our loop body, we are doing some execution and we are incrementing our terminating variable so that we will eventually have a terminating condition. and We won't get stuck in some kind of an infinite loop. In the do while, what's happening here is that you have a reverse setup of the order of execution with the loop. The first thing that happens is that the loop body specified by what is within the do section of the do while is executed before the terminating condition is checked. So we are able to print at least once every time or ask for input validation at least once every time the, the do while is run. So the first thing we do is we do some execution of some type and then we increment our terminating value in some way. And then we check to see if that terminating value has reached its terminating condition. If it has not, then we can perform, perform the loop operation again. So to give you an idea of what that looks like, if we are to, I'm going to just leave a line here just to make sure we can tell the difference. If we set num and num2 to no given value, you can see here that we're printing both of them exactly the same number of times and we have entered both of the loops. So we see the print statement from both the while loop and the do while. Now if we were to set num to something outside of the terminating condition, so say we, we set it larger than 10, which means that it would not enter this loop. So in this, in this while loop, num has to be less than 10 in order for the loop body to be executed. So if num is outside of the loop and it is set to something larger than 10 or 10, it will pass over the loop and this will not be executed because this statement would be false. Or I'm sorry, it would be true. It would already be greater than 10. Now if we did the same thing for num2 and set it to 12, Notice that we don't have that check right off the bat, so we can go directly into the do section of our loop. We can print at least once and then check for that terminating condition to see if it's true or false after the fact. One thing to note here is that this while statement can be below or it can be on the same line as your bracket. Either one is valid. They're both syntactically correct. So if we are to run this again, let's run it again and see what happens. So notice that we are getting one message from the do while loop, but we are not printing anything before that, except for the C out on line 18 to give us some spacing. And this is because the do while is able to execute that one time. And after it executes once, we realize that num2 is already larger so the while loop has actually met its terminating condition, so we don't print anything else. It does not continue. 
Those are the main differences between the while and the do while setup. Thanks for watching and happy coding.